Welcome back, teens. Thank you for joining us as we continue our series in the Sermon on the Mount. Today, we're going to discuss a topic that has an old-timey feel to it, but it actually pertains to us and pops up in our lives daily. Stay tuned to see what it is. Welcome back teens from South Florida, West Palm, Broward, Miami, as we continue our Tri-County services together. And if you're joining us from somewhere else, we're really glad to have you as well. Last week, Emilio Cerna from West Palm did a great job talking to us about treasure and specifically how the treasure in our life can control us. And so it is very important where our treasure lies because our heart lies there also. This week, we're going to discuss a topic that has an old timey feel to it. And because of that, I think we often overlook or don't think about it when in fact it plays a major role in our lives on a daily basis. We hear it and participate it without even knowing it sometimes. Today, we're going to discuss the topic of oaths. Be turning in your Bibles to Matthew 5. We're going to be reading verses 33 through 37, and we'll get there in a few minutes. You know, we live in a culture where oaths or swearing, as we would say it today, happens all the time. I'm sure we hear uh, people say phrases or maybe we have used phrases ourselves like, I swear to God or I swear on my life or that's on everything or I swear on whoever's, whoever's grave, my mother's grave, my father's grave. We hear it all over the place, even in movies. I think about the beginning of The Dark Knight. I love the Batman series. And right at the beginning of The Dark Knight, Batman's holding a guy over a ledge upside down, kind of interrogating him, trying to get information out of him. And the guy says, I don't know, I swear to God. And then Batman says in his crazy voice, swear to me so don't swear to god swear to me uh, which is crazy just a, a side note we don't ever want to put ourselves in god's place um, by saying swear to me instead of swear to god but i want to ask the question why do we say phrases like i swear to god or all the other ones we just mentioned i think we do it to give our words some kind of credibility and oftentimes it's because we have let someone down prior so when someone asks us, will we be somewhere or will we do this or that? We say, I swear to X, Y, Z, fill in the blank at the end to, to validate or fortify the statement we just made, especially if we have let that person down in the past. We do this because we want people to know or at least think that we're serious about the things they say and serious about the things that we say. And we generally swear to things that are bigger than us, right? Like God, or things that have a risk for us, like I swear on my life, as we mentioned before. Now, the funny thing is, is that we all know someone who does this, right? A friend or an acquaintance who says, I swear to God, or I promise, or I put that on everything, or I swear on my life all the time. We know someone like that. And oftentimes that person is the least trustworthy person we know because of what we just said, right? And when people say it often, usually it's because they've let us down and they need to let us know that they mean it this time. But they say it over and over and over and we roll our eyes because we don't trust them because of their past actions. We hear the older generation say sometimes, or I have anyways, that there was a time when a person's word actually meant something. I heard it said that you could drive a car off the lot by simply telling them that you would make the payments. But those times are off, obviously long gone. But if you are a Christian, and honestly, even if you're not, I think that we should be people of our word. We should be different than the general population of this world, right? Our word should mean something. Think about the game Among Us for a quick second. Since I know most of you are playing it or have recently, it might have fizzled out a little bit. But after every round, there is one or two or maybe more, depending on the group that you're playing with, people that swear up, down, left and right that they are not the killer. I swear, I promise on my life. And if you play with a group like me, 
you think those people are the least trustworthy and you think that they are guilty. And so you vote them off and we see, were they the killer or were they not? But just think about that. The people that say it the most are the least we want to trust. So in real life though, let us, let's be people of our word. But let's get to our main text here in Matthew 5, starting in verse 33. It says, Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, Jesus is speaking, But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it, it, it is his footstool or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Now that last line is very interesting. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. I'm not gonna discuss it a lot, but I do wanna come back to it in our discussion questions later, because I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to think about that. Now, I know that many times people read the definition of a word at the beginning of a lesson, but I wanted to wait and read it after we read the scripture. So, oath is defined as a solemn promise, often invoking a divine witness regarding one's future action or behavior. Seems pretty straightforward, nothing out of the ordinary, but check out the second definition. There's secondary definitions oftentimes, and this is from the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary. The secondary definition for oath is a profane or offensive expression used to express anger or other strong emotions. And similar words that they put are swear words, profanity, and dirty word. It's kind of interesting because these two definitions don't seem similar at all. Usually a secondary definition is somewhat similar, but they don't seem very similar at all. But I do think they have a few connections. First off, neither should be said or done hastily, right? Like if you're going to do a solemn promise that's often invoking a divine witness, you don't want to do that hastily. And at the same time, you also don't want to hastily say a profane or offensive expression used to express anger, right? Neither one of those things should be done or said hastily. And I also think like the first definition can lead to the second. And I want to use a scripture to explain what I mean. In Deuteronomy 23 verses 21 through 23, it says, If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what has passed through your lips. For you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. See, just like the two definitions are very different, in the scripture, the vow or the oath itself isn't bad or sinful, but it can lead to something that is terrible, like the second definition, if we fail to follow through with it. So why say it at all? Just be a person of your word. But let's hop back to the Sermon on the Mount. There's a few things I want us to learn from the verses in Matthew 5. So I'm going to read them again for us. Verses 33 through 37 it says, Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So first off, Jesus is telling us, don't swear an oath at all. And what's his main reason? He says, we don't have the authority to swear by the things that we generally swear by. We can't swear by the things above because that's God's throne, it says. 
And we can't even we can't even swear by the things of this earth. Why? Because it's his footstool and he reigns over this as well. Shoot, we can't even swear on ourselves. We can't even make a slight change to our own bodies naturally, right? In verse 36, he says, you cannot even make one hair white or black. We don't decide when our hair starts to gray, it just happens. We have no control over it. Basically, he's saying we have no business swearing to God or anything else because we have zero, and I mean absolutely zero power to control or manipulate those things. Only God has that power. The other lesson I want us to take from these verses is that we need to work on being reliable and we need to work on having integrity. Verse 37 says, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. If you follow through with your yes and know when to say no, you will be reliable. My dad used to always tell me that being reliable doesn't mean saying yes to everything. It means following through when you say yes and being honest and saying no when you can't follow through with what someone is asking of you. You know, I, I know some of you have heard this story before, but my early years in college, um, you know, me and one of my good friends, Hanley, we decided that we really wanted to make more of an impact on campus. Um, we had a lot of disciples on campus, but we kind of noticed that in between classes, we would all just congregate in the library and just talk and chill until we needed to go to our next class. So me and Hanley kind of brought the group together and challenged them, hey, instead of coming here, but in between classes and hanging out, let's go out on campus and share our faith, do Bible talks and really try to make an impact. So him and I kind of kind of headed up the charge and lots of times it would just be me and Hanley. Other disciples wouldn't come. Sometimes we wouldn't have visitors. And so we would just pray together. We'd pray for the harvest. We'd pray that the disciples would be more committed. Um, and it was great. Him and I became really, really close um, through this because we were working for God. But there was a time where I got kind of discouraged and I just stopped showing up for a week or two. And it really hurt Hanley. And I think he didn't know how to exactly tell me. So he went to Kyle Eastman, who was help, helping lead the campus at the time. Um, and Kyle asked me, hey, can we have lunch this week? And so I was kind of excited, you know, I'm going get to get with Kyle. You know, a lot of people are vying for his time. It's going to be great. And so we go to lunch and Kyle goes on to rebuke me. Um, and, I, and, and it hit home for me. It was great, honestly, in the long run. And I remember it so well that I know exactly where I was, whatever it was, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. I was on Newberry Road, Gainesville, Florida, at Moe's Southwest Grill, eating a burrito, and Kyle Eastman rebuked me. And I didn't even want to finish my food, honestly. I'm sure I did, but I didn't even want to finish my food because I was so cut to the heart. Um, but I remember that to this day. Now, I sh I'm sure Kyle does not remember that conversation. It was one conversation in a long list of Kyle Eastman conversations of correcting somebody. But for me, I will remember that for the rest of my life and it helped me be a reliable person since then and kyle told me years after that you know chase you are one of the more reliable people for me in my life and that meant a lot because again he didn't remember that conversation but i did and how much it helped me change in that regard the point being if you practice this being reliable you will grow in your integrity and there will be no need to fortify your yes or no by swearing to God or to anything else. People will trust your word and that is the goal of this whole passage. Jesus is saying, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And you don't need to swear on anything else. So what, I, what I'm saying here is be careful with your words. Think before you speak and make a commitment to someone. Before you say anything, ask yourself, can I do what this person is asking of me? And also it's okay to say, hey, I'm not sure if I can do that. Let me think on it and get back to you. Or just give them a simple no if you know you can't follow through with that thing. The bottom line is that the, Christian, the Christian's word should mean something, but sadly, oftentimes it doesn't. Our yes or our no should be as good as a solemn oath of old in the Old Testament. Is that the case for you? Just ask yourself right now, is that the case for me? Stop swearing and start following through and you don't need to swear by anything. 
I really hope that this helps you have a new view on the word oath and helps you see the role that it plays in your life and how it, how it affects the people around you as well. And as always, I wanna leave you with some discussion questions for you and your friends, your family, or your youth group. Number one, are you someone who feels the need to make an oath or to swear on something? And if so, why is that? Question two, is having high integrity and being reliable a big priority for you? Why or why not? And question three, back to verse 37 it says all you need to say is simply yes or no anything beyond this comes from the evil one my question or really two questions here are do you believe this that beyond this the simple yes or no all everything comes from the evil one do you believe that and how do you think satan could use oaths or swears against us i really hope you guys enjoyed and as always we will see you next week love you guys Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. We are so excited about all that God is doing right here in Broward County, Florida.